Good morning from Pensacola, Florida. We are heading to the beach. So this right here is Pensacola Beach. There's the giant Pensacola Beach beach ball water tower. And this is the more popular beach for sure, but we are gonna be heading all the way down to Fort Pickens, a private little beach very secluded from everywhere else. So this is part of the Gulf Islands National Seashore and we're heading all the way down to Fort Pickens. I think we're gonna be going to the sound side, which is over here on the right because we are gonna be doing some fishing, but the Gulf side right over here is the pretty side with all of the sand dunes and the Gulf itself, the Gulf of Mexico. So we'll see, we'll probably get a good amount of activity on both sides time that I'm home. So we've made it to Fort Pickens. We toured around this place last time I was here, and that was a lot of fun. Built in 1834. 1834. That's and true. we are heading all the way down to, I believe, the very end of this inlet, island, peninsula. And uh, yeah, we're gonna be going to the beach. All right, and we've made it down to the end of the point. I guess it's not really a peninsula because this is an island, but it's the very, very tip of the end of the island. I suppose, but we have set up our little area over here on this side so we can do some fishing. I think then it's set up about, how many is that? Is that six different fishing lines? That is a lot of fishing lines. It's gonna be pretty windy over here, so bear with me if it gets a little bit loud. We might go down, can't really see it right over here, but there's kind of an extension of the point kind of way over there that we can go check out. This is where I believe back around Christmas time, around New Year's time, when I was last in Pensacola, we went over there to the beach. So yeah, this is a very familiar area and we'll probably go check that out in a little bit, but right now the focus is gonna be fishing. So that's what we are doing and setting up for right over here. Okay, and we are pretty much set up. It's probably gonna be pretty windy right now, so I do apologize. It took a while to get this umbrella set up because it is so incredibly windy. I had to dig probably like a four foot deep hole to stick that in so it didn't fly away. But this is our little beach setup, at least for right now, for fishing purposes. My dad is currently working on all of these different lines, these reels, putting the lines on them. There's the wind. Okay, I'm gonna try to go against the wind so it's hopefully a little bit less windy. Dennis is about to cast a net. Let's see if we can catch anything, Dennis. Full confidence. Probably could have been a little bit better, but you never know. So nothing on that first cast, but the wind is very aggressive today, comparatively to the last few times Dennis has been out here, because him and my dad have been coming out quite a lot to go fishing together. So we're gonna try something a little bit different, maybe kind of go with the wind, if possible. It is so windy today, wow. Okay, Dennis is trying again. Let's see if he has any more success. Maybe. You usually make it a little bit Further out when it's not this windy? Yeah, I can't throw it very far with the wind. Yeah. I mean, you never know. You've caught a few things before, haven't you? Yeah. Like what? Uh, a blue crab, a couple fish. So now we've moved on from casting a net to casting a line. Dennis is gonna try to catch a pinfish for my dad. Dennis, what is a pinfish? Small fish. It's a small fish. With lots of pens on it. What are you gonna do with it? We're gonna put it on a hook and use it for bait. Interesting. Five bait. Okay. My dad's still setting up all of his reels back over here. I think he's almost done and ready to go. He just needs to bait them and cast them out. It's gonna be hard though, the wind. Yeah, the wind is pretty relentless over here for fishing. So no luck quite yet, but we're still trying. The wind is just, I keep saying this, but it's a major challenge today as far as just trying to fish. I'm having a sandwich. My dad packed an entire cooler of sandwiches and drinks. Fishing is something my dad gets so excited about. He woke up super early today, put everything in the car, and he was like, let's go, let's go. So, I don't know. It's cool to see my dad excited about these sorts of things, but I'm pretty positive that we're gonna be coming back at least another time or two while I'm here, hopefully. Okay, so Dennis and I are on a mission, right, Dennis? Yep. What are we gonna go do? We're gonna go check out the Gulf side of the island, because that is the bay. Mm -hmm. But over there's the gulf. Since the wind is going like south, we figure if we go to the south side of the island, then our fishing lines will be carried out rather than push back in. Let's do it. Let's see if it's a better option. So we came from way over there. It is so windy. Way down there, that is Fort Pickens. We're heading right over here, but it seems as though the wind is also coming from this direction too. So it looks like it's moving 
like this, so this may not be a better way to go, but I guess we'll find out. All right, and we made it over to the other side. This is definitely much more of a beach than the other side, without a doubt. The water is absolutely gorgeous, reasonably shallow, but it definitely looks like there's a pretty significant wind kind of coming from this direction. Isn't this a beautiful beach? I think we definitely want to come back and make a day of it over here because the idea was to go to the other side to fish and then come back over here another day for an actual beach excursion. Swim. To swim. And maybe fish too. Have you fished over on this side? Never. Really? Yeah. Nah, always... Our dad prefers the other side, but it is pretty shallow over here. So we're heading back over to the other side of the island. Dennis found a fishing line in the sand that he almost stepped on with his bare feet. So I think fishing may be botched today. What would you say, Dennis? Uh, we'll see. Maybe we'll get lucky. The, the wind, wind did stops. stop for a minute, but we're also kind of in the middle of this, what would you call this? I consider it a peninsula, because it's even though island. we're on an island, it's a very long stretch of land. Because so, every continent is an island, if you think about it. So Britain isn't an island. I don't know. Okay, we made it back to the other side of the body of land that we are currently inhabiting. <sighs> What a poor day for fishing. I'm a bit bummed, but I don't know. It was more my dad and Dennis's thing, but they spent so much effort coming out here with the rods and the reels and the bait, and for it not to really happen, that's unfortunate. So now Dennis is gonna be teaching me how to cast a net properly, and we're trying to come over to a new area to see if we can have a little bit more success doing it because we have not really had, Dennis hasn't had the most success where we were. All right, Dennis, so are you gonna walk me through the process here? Yeah, so first I put on this little wrist strap here so it won't fall off when I throw it. Okay. Now, I'm just gonna coil the rope. All right. We had to untangle the net here because it got pretty tangled up. It gets tangled pretty easily, apparently. Okay, so now I'm gonna grab this. This is apparently called the horn. Right here, mm -hmm. where this part separates. Because what happens is when you pull it, the net will tighten and then it gets, you know, like it bunches up at the end. Right. So I'm gonna come down here. I'm gonna grab a little bit of that. Okay. Now I'm gonna pull up the net. I'm gonna come down about like halfway with my thigh. Okay. And I'm gonna grab that and loop it. Okay. And then put that on top. Now I divide the net into thirds. Into thirds? Yeah. So like right here, to the third. Okay. I'm gonna grab that, put that up here. And then I come down here, and I grab a piece of this. And then basically what you do, you throw it, and, as you, and it's like a sidearm throw. Okay. As you throw it, you swing back with the other hand, and that makes it spin and open. And do you let go of that last? Yeah. Okay. So let's see if I can make it happen. All right. I have confidence in you, Dennis. Bye. That's a pretty good cast right there. Nice job. There's some fish. There. I've seen some. Hey, look at him jumping. That's the guy I needed to get. And they've gotten somebody. Let's see. Hey, there's somebody in there. Really? I think so. Nope, there's not. My bad. I thought there was. Okay, so Dennis is going to go a little bit deeper. Let's see if he can have more success. Uh-oh. It's not hard when it gets deep. It's harder to get a good throw off. Because it gets cut on you? Well, it's just... It's hard to know, like lift it up out of the water. Do you usually always know when you catch something because you can see some movement or are you ever surprised? No, I don't know until I pull it in. Really? Because, Interesting. Like, I caught a fish the other day and I didn't even like open the net. <laughs> you caught a fish and you didn't even open it up? Like, like the throw was really bad. Really? Yeah. Okay, I picked it up. Then you can see the net like tightens at the bottom. Mm hmm So whatever's in there won't come out. Well, because it's weighted. But I'm not seeing anything in there. All right, it's my boy's first cast. I watched YouTube videos and I've taught Roy how to do it. Let's see if he can do it.
pull it, see if we got anything. I don't think so. Well, you got a lot of water. Yay. I am uh, gonna go ahead and redo this process here so I can hopefully get a better casting. And I'm filming, so I won't be able to tell Roy what to do this time. We'll see if he does it right. Wait, what? I said I'm filming, so I won't be able to tell you if you're doing it right. We'll find out once I do or don't catch something, right? Interesting form. Very interesting. My third over here. Bring this up. I pick this up like a skirt. Yep. I'm gonna try a different approach. I'm gonna try a launching, like a running launch. Uh -huh, okay. okay. So. Yeah. That was good. Yeah. Was it? The part of this either is made. But did it open? Yeah. All the way? I don't know about that. Nothing. Alright, so I've had this a few times. I'm feeling good about this one. You ready? Yep. Alright. Oh. Wait, 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 wait. Don't pull it in yet. You gotta let it sink. So you let it sink first and then you pull it in. Well, you feel it? I feel it. I caught something. Something big? Something pretty big. I don't believe it. I caught a fish. Look at this. What? It's what? enormous. What? I'm gonna fillet this and put it on a salad with some balsamic vinaigrettes. That's gonna be delicious. So now I just need to go find Dennis and we can go catch up with my mom, wherever she is. Look at this big boy. There's mom all the way down there. I have my other sandwich here, a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and some juice. It looks like she went all the way down and she's on her way back. This would have been the ideal place to go, the most secluded place possible probably, but it's definitely a bit of a walk down here and it's pretty hot. All right, so we finally caught up with my mom and look how close the drop off is to the sandbar over here. I told Dennis we should come over here with the net, but he was like, no, if I catch something, I won't be able to bring it back. But wow, this would have been the place to do it. There's a lot of fish over here. So this is the Pensacola Sound, which connects to the intercoastal waterway. And we've reached the very tip of the point over here, heading around the corner over towards the Gulf and about I guess several weeks ago now, there was a splashdown right here in the Gulf, and a lot of people came to check it out, including my parents. So unfortunately, my parents didn't really get to see it because it was way off the coast. Do you remember the name of that, Dennis, and the, yeah, the purpose? Yeah, the SpaceX launch. I think it was the Dragon. Um, I'm not sure, though. But basically, it was the first manned uh, space flight from the U.S. in a decade. And it's also really cool because the rockets themselves are reusable. They land back on like the same platform they launched off of. So the low tide has pretty much made an entire wall here. There's a bunch of sand dunes back there, but they are closed because you don't want those to erode away. I think we're just gonna head around the entirety of the point here and then probably meet back over with Dad, the same direction that Dennis and I went a little bit earlier. I wanted to run over real quick and read one of the signs they have over here by the sand dunes. So it's the Gulf Islands National Seashore area closed for the protection of nesting birds, wildlife, or sensitive habitats. And that's the entirety of this area over here. But Dennis and my mom are way over there in the water. Look at that. And just look how beautiful and completely deserted it is over here the entire beach all to ourselves. So oh, I fell off a dune. This water is so incredibly refreshing. Here comes Baywatch, Dennis. Ah! I gotta put my camera away before I drop it. So luxurious with your hair there, Dennis. You wanna see a thirst trap? Sure, what's that? <laughs> what was that? I shot water up my nose. <laughs> That's a thirst strap, all right. I was trying to do the, uh... Trying to whip your hair back? Yeah. Mom's all the way out there. And Dennis is gonna try it again with a little bit more grace this time. Mom keeps finding jellyfish out there because the flag is purple today, which means jellyfish. That was a little bit better. Nice. Ow. I don't think it's thumbnail material, but if you work on it... I sprained my neck. 
Yeah. How do you keep hurting yourself? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go put the camera away and then join them out in the water for a little swim, hoping none of us get stung by a jellyfish. That'd be ideal, and then we can go meet back up with my dad on the other side of the island. So we just got done taking a dip in the water. And how was that, Mama? Did you enjoy that? It is the most refreshing thing in the world. I love coming here. This time of year especially, don't tell anybody. But <laughs> we got this whole beach to ourselves. It's like beautiful white sand, gorgeous beach, all the bird life, the, the uh, cranes and the pipers and the storks and the, uh, what do you call the other little birds? I forget, seagulls. <laughs> <laughs> And the crabs and the jellyfish. And it's just so temperate and enjoyable oh, and refreshing just, in the water. Yeah, this is heaven on earth to me. It's where the sun and the sky meets the horizon and the sea oats and the green blue waters of the Gulf. It's just so pretty and so relaxing. It so, is. This is my happy place. <laughs> well, let's go meet back up with Dad, see what okay. he's up to. All right. One, two, three. Whoa. So we're back over here by Dad, by our little base camp. And they both just cast it into the water and they were trying to see who was gonna cast farther and I can't tell who got it out farther. It looks like Dad to me, but I don't know. So Dennis says that he cast farther than Dad. So let's see if he can get a pretty far cast as well. Uh, no, Dad definitely cast further than that. That was the second try. What was the first try? First try was further than him, of course. It was further than dead? Maybe. All right, so I think we're about to call it a day from the beach. We're gonna pack all this up, put it back into the car. The wind had never really died down, so the fishing wasn't the most successful today, but we'll probably come out at some point later on this week to try again. Right now we're trying to talk about what we want to do for dinner later on tonight. Probably gonna pick up some, some takeout. I don't know if I'm gonna be filming that because I'm not really filming everything this trip. Like yesterday, I just filmed myself and Dennis driving around too all of the places around Pensacola that were the most significant to us growing up. There were plenty of places that I did not get to show and it's bothering me just like a little bit because I would have wanted to show everything but growing up in this city, every single street corner almost has significance so we did the best that we could just driving around but probably gonna put all this back into the car and then go get some takeout somewhere for dinner tonight. All right, so we're on our way back home. Here's Fort Pickens right over here which again we toured around last time that I was in. Pensacola, almost a year ago, that's how long it's been since I've been back, but hopefully we'll be back out to the beach here at some point as we uh, head back home. That was a nice trip to the beach today, about four and a half hours, or five hours, maybe a little bit more than that. So on our way back home, Curiosity got the best of us and we stopped off down a side road to explore one of these old abandoned Fort Pickens, what is this called, this area that we're here? Two, three, four. This is one of the batteries, so this is one, this was an outskirt of Fort Pickens, right, Dennis? Sure. It's on the Fort Pickens campsite. They had a string of forts, they had a string of batteries where they hid cannons under the dunes and mm -hmm. ammo for the defense of the fort and the defense of the harbor leading into and around the fort. I don't think people are supposed to go in here. It's really yeah, the creepy doors open. and, well, that doesn't mean you're supposed to go in there. Well, Somebody the, could have opened it up. Been, I mean, all forts are typically open at some point. It was closed for a while and probably because those areas were wet Mm -hmm. And you know, they don't want you in there. And Obviously, flooded it's out. Hazardous, yeah. There's a giant gun over here. Is this a turret? Is that what you'd call this? No, I'm not sure. We ought to go look at the sign right up the road. It explains a little bit more about it. Mm hmm. You can just see this massive gun that would be protecting this battery. The main fort is Fort Pickens again, which is kind of way back over there. And they had a bunch of batteries kind of all around. I'm pretty sure that there's one way over there. They're pretty much all along the shore over here, kind of protecting the. The Gulf, which is right out there, and look at the size of this big gun. This is interesting. So back in December, we only really toured the actual fort, Fort Pickens, but a lot of these batteries, again, like I said, are kind of on the outskirts, and you can't usually go inside them because a lot of them are in pretty disrepair. But I guess let's go check out the sign. Okay, so there is a sign over here that talks about the batteries, and there's a map that shows off Fort Pickens, which is the main forts that we toured about a year ago when we came for Christmas. There's Fort McRee, which I believe has sank, and then there's Fort Barrancas, which you can't see kind of back over there, but there's a bunch of these different batteries that are protecting the various forts, and this one is where we are, 234, which is back over there again in the trees. And so that's pretty 
interesting. They have a bunch of different guns, I think, that have been installed by the natural, the natural, the National Park Service right there. So this is pretty interesting. These batteries help to protect the forts. That's cool. Look, it's the Blue Angels way up in the sky. That's so awesome. The Naval Air Station is stationed in Pensacola here, so this is kind of where the Blue Angels hang out quite a lot, but the battery that we just came from was way down there, and now we came to a different battery that is a lot more visible for the most part. You can see it has a different gun right over there, and this was a very specific gun because it would actually, after a shot, it would kind of come back down so they could reload it safely. So we just came from battery uh, 234, and now we're over by battery Cooper. So this is the one that or one of the ones that actually has a name to it. This was built, I believe, in 1906. So that's cool. And during World War I, the U.S. Army removed the guns for possible use as a railway gun in France. So this gun came from the, Smithso the Smithsonian Institution. Wow. So that is pretty cool. And it looks like Dennis went up the stairs up there to uh, take a picture. So we can actually go up the stairs here. This is pretty cool because the battery over by Fort Pickens has been fenced off so you can't go over there because I think it's pretty structurally unsound so this is we have lived here our entire lives mom has lived here quite a lot longer than we have and I think this is her first time over here checking this out so this is cool right mom this is your first time over here checking this out yeah I think uh, I don't know that I've ever seen this as a child I always wanted to but it was kind of off the loop you know and we went to some of the more major batteries like battery length and battery worth and a lot of them are inaccessible now. Yeah. So here we are on top of the battery. We just climbed up the stairs. And here's the recoil gun here, which is massive. And then there's Dennis showing off his guns. Next to the gun. Of course. And then you can see the other gun way over there, the other battery. And then Fort Pickens is kind of just way back over there somewhere. But we're probably going to explore around here for a little bit. And I guess hop back in the car. Mom wants you to flex. Oh, we're going to flex our guns? Yep. So I came down to get a closer look at this gun, which is very impressive, and I can't help but notice little messages like this, will you be my girlfriend? Because you know what, nothing is more romantic than graffiti on a historically significant location. Always just makes me so happy. Not really, obviously, that's actually one of my biggest pet peeves ever, is graffiti at places like this. But now we are hopping back into the car heading on home but this was cool this was like an extension of our Fort Pickens experience from last year so cool so I thought we were driving home but we decided to make a quick drive by of one more battery there's Dennis all the way up there this is battery worth and my mom does remember this one so we've seen all of these right here there's also battery Langdon which is way over here and then the batteries that were actually over by the fort that a lot of them are inaccessible right now. So I guess she just never did this loop, or if she did, she doesn't really remember it, but this one is a lot different than the other ones that we've seen. It looks like you can go all the way up there, which is pretty surprising. It says half the armament was scrapped after World War II, but four mortars remained until 1942 when the battery became the Army Navy Defense uh, Harbor Defense Command Post for the Pensacola area during World War II. Way over there is a picnic area that my mom remembers picnicking at and running around the batteries. Let's see what the view looks like all the way up at the top. This is the highest you can go, and I would have thought this would have been blocked off, but it's not. So Dennis and Mom are heading back down the stairs. Hi, guys. Hi. And I'm going to head up to the top. It looks like people would have normally climbed up these ladder rungs, but there's a ladder outside, too, that looks very slender. So I'm going to try to head up here. And here I am on the very top level of this battery, which I would not have thought was accessible. You can see the other batteries way over there. I am really high up here right now. Wow. Well, this is pretty incredible to see. There's Dad way down there. Those are the stairs that I started out on. And there's Dennis down there in another kind of a courtyard area over here. Well, this is cool. So there's another battery way down there, and then all the other ones are going to be back by Fort Pickens, which is going to be kind of way back over there. And then there's a few more batteries kind of on the other side of Pensacola Bay, back by where Fort Barrancas would have been over here, and then Fort McRee over there, I think. Wow, I am utilizing a lot of information that I used to know quite well uh, as a kid, and I'm just kind of accessing it again. Hi, Mom. Hi. Man, I know that I already said this, but I am so disappointed at the people that feel the need to post their 
TikTok, Instagram, and Snapchat handles here, it's just, that just makes me so sad. It really does, but nothing I can do about it. Getting back into the car now, I think, and actually heading home, but that was a fun little trip to Fort Pickens, that's for sure. Right here on the left, this is Battery Langdon, which I think is one of the bigger batteries. Right there, just kind of hidden in the sand dunes. I don't see any visible guns here or artillery, but this is a pretty big battery. Wow. There was two of them. They began to pop up. Oh, they would? Oh, Here's the other side over here. Okay. They're right there. So we've decided what we're going to be doing for dinner tonight. We're heading inside Joe Patty's, which is a seafood place in Pensacola, Florida that my dad absolutely loves. We're going to get some oysters and fry them up at home, as well as some other sides potentially inside. Let's go inside and get some seafood, Dennis. It's a seafood market. It is. Okay, so we have the oysters that we're going to be buying. They have a lot of seafood here, obviously, because it's a seafood market. They have a restaurant, a merchandise location. We're probably going to go somewhere else to get some sides, but here we go. Got some oysters. Maybe have some shrimp tonight, too, right? And then Dennis has this to uh, bread and fry the, uh, the oysters, I think, as well as the shrimp. So we made it back home. We finished up at Joe Patty's, and then we stopped by a local grocery store to pick up a couple things, and we are gonna have a delicious fried seafood dinner. We got oysters and shrimp, Dennis got a po'boy baguette, and we're gonna make some fried seafood po'boys, and then we went to the store over here, kinda near our house, and got some okra, gonna fry some okra, so we are gonna have a delicious dinner tonight, and I am very excited about it. All right, so here we go, we have our fried oysters coming out of the oil. This is going to be pretty right, good. Alright, okay. That's exciting, we have a lot more where this came from for sure. And then maybe some fried okra too. And there it is, the end result. This is my fried oyster po' boy. I have a little caprese salad there on the side made by Dennis and a lemon wedge. I'm going to pour some cocktail sauce on this. Got a massive pile of oysters right over here. And then Dennis made some roasted asparagus there to kind of go along the side. We were going to do okra, but we'll probably do that at some other point with the shrimp tonight. It's just going to be the fried oysters, but that's... Looks delicious. I'm excited. So those po' boys were absolutely phenomenal. Who would have thought that frying and seasoning them would make them so good? Oh wait, I thought that because I love fried oysters. I even have a little follow-up here. Some key lime pie, so that's gonna be exciting. Dennis, po', po boys were actually your idea, so. Yeah. Good idea. I liked it quite a lot. It really just kind of put the, uh, put a nice little cherry on the Sunday that was today because we got to go to the beach and go swimming and go fishing, which wasn't really that successful, but I got to cast a net and it was just great. We got to walk around and check out the artillery batteries around Fort Pickens, which was a blast. And then just being surprised by how cool of a dinner we could have made tonight because I, again, I love fried oysters and seafood. So this was great. And now our mom is coming home from our grandmother's assisted living facility. So we're gonna make her a delicious po' boy to come home to, but Thank you for hanging out with us today. I appreciate it. It was a lot of fun, and I'll probably see you tomorrow because I didn't think I'd be vlogging this entire trip, but we keep doing some fun stuff, so I'll probably see you tomorrow. So have a good day. You want to say goodbye, Dennis? Goodbye, Dennis. Goodbye. Goodbye.